All right, today I'm going to be going over my 30-day carnivore diet results with you. I'll be talking about several different areas, and I have some notes here to keep me on track. Um, so first off, I'm going to talk about a quick recap of my history because I've been on the diet before. So I will go over that for those who haven't seen my healing journey or any other videos on my channel here. And then I'm going to talk about this last 30 days that I've gone strict carnivore and uh, some of the topics that we'll be discussing are food, including what I ate, um, how I'm dealing with cravings, if I'm having cravings, uh, fasting, how many meals I'm eating, fat content, and anything that I'm going to change about my diet moving forward. Next, I'm going to talk about energy because that's a big one um, for my healing journey and for a lot of others out there as well. Um, I'm going to talk about that, electrolytes, kind of everything in the energy category. Then we'll go over mood and mindset or mood and mental health. So I'll talk about some changes that I've noticed there and what I'm going to do as far as a strategy moving forward in that area. And then lastly, I'll go over some like physical body uh, things that uh, pertain to my healing journey in particular. And hopefully if any of you are suffering with some of these things, um, you can be inspired by the results here. Um, I'll talk about gut issues and my skin health because those are the two main things that I'm tracking as far as my physical body goes. Um, weight loss is not going to be a main anything that I really touch on in this video. So if you're looking for weight loss I'll, and you've not heard of any of these um, channels yet, I'll leave some links for you below if that's kind of the main thing that you want to hear about because um, that's not really been uh, one of the issues that I've been working with or reasons that I've been doing the diet. So uh, just to kind of qualify what the video is about and let's get started talking about just a quick recap of my history uh, with the carnivore diet. So I, if you haven't seen my healing journey, that's about an hour long video of a lot of detail from kind of day one when I started realizing I was not well um, till now, I'm 36 years old right now, I'll be turning 37 in 2023. And so um, I suffered with severe, what I considered severe IBS symptoms for um, over half of my life now, uh, about 15 years or so. And I had uh, issues with extreme brain fog, fatigue, um, just feeling tired all the time, low mood slash mood swings. I would also have kind of periods where I would have extreme anxiety and then um, periods where I would feel very apathetic about life and then some periods where I would feel somewhat depressed because of the way my body was feeling all the time. And so I've had a lot of struggles emotionally over the years uh, and most of that I consider to be what I was putting in my body because I've noticed such significant changes um, in that area. I found the carnivore diet originally in 2018 and I followed it for about 11 months and during that 11 month period it took about three to four months of being pretty strict in the beginning. I had whittled my way down from uh, plant-based to paleo to keto to very low carb, low FODMAP. And then I eventually cut out all the plants and discovered that I felt best eating meat. So all of my gut symptoms essentially disappeared within three to four months of being on a uh, zero carb carnivore diet. And my mood improved, my skin improved. I've dealt with psoriasis and uh, rosacea type issues, eczema, all kinds of uh, like hypersensitive skin issues throughout my life, all of that improved, um, probably around month nine to 10 in my first round of carnivore. And my brain fog and mood uh, improved tremendously. Uh, then I got pregnant and I went off the diet. And again, if you want way more detail and, and all of the crazy things that have gone on over that long history, um, you can check out my healing journey video. But now I've been working my way back to getting on carnivore because I kind of thought after I got pregnant that maybe I could get away with eating some things because I had healed so much. My gut symptoms were no longer severe. Um, I had skin issues and I still had some gut issues and my mood was a little bit, you know, I, I wasn't feeling 100%, but I thought, oh, maybe I could do ketovore or I could just be keto and just eat relatively low carb, but still have plants or have some variety, have a cheat meal kind of now and then. But over the last few years, of, you know, since I gave birth to our baby, I've 
realize that that's that's just not the place that I am. Maybe someday that might be a possibility for me. But in general, I really feel best and I was still feeling pretty bad having plants in my diet. And so um, I decided to do this. So over the last three months before this 30 day chunk that we're going to focus on results for in this video, I ate about 80% carnivore. So I would, you know, have a little bit of rice, have a little bit of vegetable here or there because I do cook other things for the other members. Of, of my family here in our household. And so I would eat a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I, I would notice that that would trigger me into either a binge uh, for wanting and cr really craving a lot of salty, sugary, snacky kind of foods, foods that are not healthy for me. Or I would um, just have gut symptoms and I'd notice the brain fog returning, things like that. So I, I just came to the conclusion again that I really need to go strict. And so that's been the last 30 days it's actually a couple days uh after that at the time of filming this and so what have i noticed over the last 30 days um i my cravings for anything carb related are almost completely gone and that is such a freeing feeling that is really something that i think if you're struggling to get past your first couple of weeks. I, I read a lot of comments on other carnivores videos as well, where they're like, I've been, I keep having to start over because I can only make it like four days or seven days or 14 days or something like that. And I would, so I would just extend some encouragement to you if you're someone who's feeling that way. I mean, like do whatever you got to do. If you got to get rid of all the other junk in your house for 30 days, like if you can just get past that hump to where you start to feel the cravings go away. Um, it, it's so rewarding because that that is such a trapped feeling when you uh, feel like you can't control yourself around these foods. Uh, an example, we just went and had breakfast out at a restaurant this morning and my fiance had pancakes with his breakfast and uh, normally I would be like, give me a bite of those pancakes, you know, and I would try not to, I wouldn't order them for myself, but I'd always kind of want to pick at you know, the carbs on the table in general. And today it was like, I couldn't care less. I had, I ordered two sides of bacon and a side of hollandaise sauce to dip the bacon in and, um, and water. And that was amazing. I was completely happy with that. And so that's just, uh, I left that restaurant today feeling really happy because I thought, oh, I'm finally here at that place again, where I don't have any cravings and I can actually be in the presence of some of these foods and not feel like I, I really want them or give in to them. And so um, what have I been eating over the past 30 days? My diet has consisted of, I would say, 90% ground beef. I get 80-20 ground beef. Right now I buy these giant 10-pound rolls from Walmart and I have some videos up on this channel now about frugal and budget um, carnivore diet tips. Um, a couple of those and I plan to make more of those. So if that's something you're interested in, doing this diet on a budget and finding out little hacks to kind of make this work for, for your finances, you can check out those videos. And so that's what I'm eating mostly is 80-20 ground beef and I do add some salted butter to that. I've cut out um, dairy and I, and I did have some heavy cream in my coffee for the first two weeks, but um, I'll get to that part when I talk about skin, but I, I have essentially now cut out all dairy um, completely. I've had a little bit of chicken, like whole uh, chicken leg quarters, thighs and, and drumsticks or some drumsticks I've made, uh, a little bit of pork roast and a few eggs, but for the most part, it's been fatty ground beef with salt and butter. Uh, fasting, I do not intentionally fast. I don't set a hard uh, time restricted window for my eating. I am really, really trying to get back in touch with my true hunger. And so I also have a, a struggle with eating a lot in one sitting now where it used to not really bother me. And I think there was, again, if you go watch my long video there, I've had a history of binging and restriction as well. And so it was kind of easy for me to binge in round one, but in, in round two, as I'm calling it now, I, I feel like I can't, I get very, very, very tired if I eat a lot of food in one sitting. And so I've been experimenting over this first 30 days here with breaking up my meals into uh, much smaller portion sizes. And then I'm just allowing myself to eat whenever I feel hungry. And so right now that actually does fall into 
sort of a time restricted window of anywhere from four to six hours of eating time per day. But again, I'm not doing that intentionally. And sometimes if I'm like hungry before I go to bed, I'll have a little bit of, of beef and butter, or I'll have even just like a spoonful of butter, um, you know, something like that. So I'm not restricting uh, my portion sizes at all, but I am trying to help my body ease back into this, especially with the fat content, which I'm going to talk about next, by allowing myself to eat smaller portion sizes in spread out over a little bit longer time to help to, to help my digestion. And so um, as far as fat content, I've also been experimenting with that over the last 30 days. I have been feeling like the intuitive pull to eat higher and higher fat, but I have to go at a pace that my digestion can can adapt to. And so in the beginning, I kind of added too much fat and I was having a lot of loose stools and kind of bl some bloating and a little bit of gastric upset um, because I just kind of went crazy on the fat at first. So I backed off and then I felt like I wanted more again. So I've just kind of been teeter tottering around with how much fat I'm putting on. I would say right now I'm at 70% calories from fat if I had to take a, a good guess. And I'm adding anywhere from two to sometimes four tablespoons of butter to my meals, depending on, again, how much I feel like I'm craving, how much tastes good to me. Sometimes I'll munch on some frozen butter chips. I'll just spread um, some room temperature butter out on a piece of parchment paper, really nice and thin, and then put that on a cookie sheet and put it in the freezer. So then you can kind of pull that parchment paper out and kind of break off a little sliver of butter and that's really nice too when it's hot to just have a little bit of something uh, put a little salt on that and it's really good so definitely playing around with that and I'm feeling better the more fat I'm able to add in and then I think that's it for food so as far as what I'm going to do moving forward I definitely am feeling like I want to add some more fish and seafood into my diet I've been looking back over some information about iodine and I'm going to talk about energy next and so I'm really trying to tweak my energy levels and see maybe I need a little bit more iodine maybe I need a little bit more DHA like from salmon something like that so I do want to start adding more seafood and fish into my diet as I go on so next let's talk about energy um, because this is one thing that I've struggled with really, really hard over the years is being very tired and uh, just having low energy, having to drink a lot of coffee and especially after becoming a new mom and like nursing around the clock and all this stuff like your sleep quality definitely goes down and so there's a big part of my energy issue that is related to that aspect of my life but I think that as I have transitioned back to low carb and now after being 30 days strict, I have noticed my sleep is better. And this is where I'll also mention alcohol. Again, there's more detail about this in my um, healing journey video, but I have now cut out alcohol as well. So I was drinking uh, vodka and soda, you know, or vodka and waters, um, like maybe a drink or two almost every night of the week still before I entered this 30 day challenge for myself. And so I know alcohol affects sleep. I was always convinced that it helped me sleep because I would have a drink or two before bed and it would relax me and I would be like, oh, I'm ready to go to sleep now. But I have noticed that my sleep seems to be improving in, um, in the way that I don't wake up as many times <laughs> during the night. And I am starting to have better dream recall, which I think is interesting. And I don't know if that's a sign of higher quality sleep or if it or what that is necessarily but I've heard some other people mention that as well so I do see some gradual improvements in my sleep quality and then then that rolls over into the energy that I have throughout the day obviously and so I, I was drinking probably an average of a pot of coffee a day that's 12 you know it says 12 cups on the pot but my cups are pretty big so that's probably like six to eight pretty big cups, 16 ounce cups of coffee or whatever it ends up working out to be a full pot of brewed coffee a day. And by the end of this 30 days, I'm down to, I would say three to four cups of half calf per day. So I like a couple cups in the morning and I usually need one or maybe two iced, just black iced coffees in the afternoon. And so um, that might sound like a lot still to somebody 
listening but it's like so it's such an improvement from what I was drinking and so over this last month I have noticed that you know I've been needing less coffee so I clearly must have more natural energy coming in it's it's a slow process but I do I do see improvement here um, electrolytes I am supplementing electrolytes right now I use the snake juice packets from Cole Robinson's channel if anybody's seen snake diet uh, guy um I get those just because they're convenient and they're unflavored and they're one of the more affordable options. I think I'm about to reorder and they, I think they have gone up like five or seven dollars, but um, they're still very affordable compared to some of the other ones. And so those are the ones I use because they don't have anything else added to them. It's just the minerals. It's no flavoring, no sweeteners, nothing else. And I think that's important to at least from my experience during the transition because oftentimes sweet tastes uh even if they're you're not really spiking our sugar or they're not they don't contain real sugar uh they can trigger uh, the want for more of that stuff and so those are the ones that i prefer right now so i do i do use electrolytes um it's very very hot where we are in like north texas area and so um yeah, most days right now in the in the in the summer, I feel like I can't get enough water and enough electrolytes. So we'll see how that changes as the temperatures go down. But um, overall, for energy, I'd say I still have some fatigue. I still feel tired um, during the day, but it's slowly improving. And I had to remind myself that on round one of carnivore, it did take me about three to four months before I felt like. I was really truly fat adapted. There were little incremental improvements in between, but um, I think for some people it just takes longer. Maybe it's a hormonal thing. There's all kinds of things going on in the body. Who knows? So I'm seeing improvements, but I'm going to be watching and keeping tabs of this moving forward, and I'll let you know when when it hits, when you start to get that energy. Um, mood and mindset is next, or uh, mental health and I uh, have struggled with mood swings kind of like I mentioned before or these like long periods of of apathy where I was just very uh, just feeling really low in mood and energy and feeling like you know I don't have a purpose I can't accomplish anything very um, negative self-talk because of the way I was feeling I um really struggled with having a positive attitude a lot of times. And so that is one of the most um, really amazing changes that I've noticed. Even this has really even been the last like seven to 10 days. Um, I felt like I like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like you just, you wake up and you feel like a baseline of joy. It's like I... I'm perfectly content to like go do the dishes or to fold this laundry or to vacuum my floors or to, you know, just sit. I mean, I like sitting and hanging out with my with my kid, but, you know, like joy in the simple things. And I feel like there again, after having a, a baseline uh, emotional state of how can I get through this day? How can I stay awake? How can I be sharp enough to do my job? How can I get through this to a place where I, I want to get up and do all these things? I actually want to participate in my own life to, to a complete extent. And that is, I have goosebumps right now. That is, I guess you call those non-scale victories or things like that, um, where even the little bit of lack of energy that I still have, even the where I don't have my diet completely tweaked to the very perfection where I'm having the perfect amount of fat and salt and protein and meal times and everything, just having that shift in mood and like my baseline where I start out each day is absolutely incredible. And so again, if you're somebody who's struggling and you're thinking, I'm, I can't get to 30 days or this is too hard or I just want to eat the bread or I just want to go out to the bar or I just want to blah, 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 whatever it is, I, I would again offer some encouragement and say, you know, there are going to be things, at least from my experience and a lot of comments I read that it's hard to describe the changes that happen. And so 
keep pushing, keep trying. If you slip up, start over, you know, keep going back, keep coming back to this because it, it really is, that, that's something that really stands out to me. Um, and yeah, my anxiety is uh, much less. I still have some anxiety and I'm, st- I st- I'm still prone to kind of uh, being a worrier in some aspects of life. But at the same time, I'm feeling so much more at peace with myself, who I am, my, co- my self-confidence is just becoming more healthy. And I think, um, you know, it's funny, and I, I don't mean to go off on a tangent on this. I'm trying to keep this somewhat condensed, but th- this is really this is really one of the most profound things I've noticed over the last 30 days. And I just feel like from, from having so much of my life be in this state of just kind of negative self-talk and negative thinking. Um, and I, and I've studied a lot of personal development. I know that my thoughts affect my feelings and then my feelings of, you know, trigger into or become my behaviors. And I understand all that technically, but to actually really have the self-awareness to look at what you are thinking about and, and really pick those things apart and ask yourself objectively, is this true? Is what I believe actually the case about myself, all these things that takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of, um, it, it takes a sense, an ability to remove yourself from your everyday circumstances, almost like you're your own coach. And I would try to do that with myself all the time, all the time over the last probably five to seven, eight years, probably now I, I always forget how old I am, but, um, yeah, probably cl- more close to 10 years since I really started getting into reading books and trying to understand myself and trying to improve on on myself. And I always struggle with that so hard, that negative, my the propensity to think negatively about myself. And the more I, when I come back to this, I'm like, I think a lot of it has to do with nutrition. I think a lot of it has to do with being sensitive to these foods and not realizing how that's affecting me. It's not just in my gut. It's not just in my skin, the things that I kind of feel in my body or that that manifest in my outward appearance, how healthy I look or how my skin looks. But it's in my mind, you know? It's it's like mental poison. And I and that might sound extreme to somebody who who's never, you know, thought about it before, but the more I do this and the better I start to feel, the more I think like, that's what it feels like to me. And so what I've been able to do is really get back in touch with my spirituality. I've always been a, a spiritually minded person. I, I love theology. I love um, psychology. I love human behavior. I really love thinking and understanding about humans and how we work and how we interact and communication and how can I fulfill my potential on this planet as as a human being and and how can I best be of service and those were all things that I just couldn't put my finger on because I I had this kind of voice in the back of my head that would that was so strong that would tell me you're not good enough you know you can't do this you you can't possibly um achieve something like this person could you know and and it's very it was very quiet but it was it was there and I hope this is making sense because this is really had been profound for me but now that I've been able to look at myself very objectively again and say here's what you're saying about yourself here's you know where I need to improve here's the things I'm doing well and then line that up with my spiritual belief system and and in, I guess incorporate would be the better word to really find alignment within that that's been the biggest blessing and change that I've noticed in the last 30 days I just feel much more connected to something higher than myself something bigger than myself and something that allows me to look at myself in my life 
and what I need to do to improve from a positive outlook instead of from a negative outlook. And so that is, and I, I think it has a lot to do with nutrition. And so I'd be curious to hear anyone else who may have experienced this. I've seen a lot of comments online, um, but maybe I'll explain it even better as we go on. But anyway, so lastly, I'm gonna talk about like physical body stuff, gut issues, skin, body composition, some things that I've noticed over the last 30 days of going strict carnivore. Um, my gut definitely had an adjustment period, but I kind of went through the worst of it over the three months prior where I was like 70, 80% compliant with the diet. Um, I had kind of the loose stools for a little bit. I had some bloating, a little bit of, you know, intermittent stuff there. Um, and then the only real issues that I've had over the last 30 days is when I've been adjusting the fat content of my diet. So like I mentioned earlier, I kind of went real crazy on the fat, added a bunch in too quickly, and then I had a lot of loose stools. And so that's actually a point Dr. Chafee brings up a lot about the overconsumption of fat. It's like, if you eat too much fat, you will know it. It's not going to turn into fat necessarily. I mean, you can eat too many calories in the sense that you're taking in too much energy for your body. But if you go too high in the fat, you're usually going to just have very loose stools and it's going to, it's going to be eliminated. And so that's kind of how you know where you're sitting as far as what you can tolerate fat-wise. But then if I cut the fat back too much, then I get more on the drier side stool wise, and I don't, you know, have the complete elimination. So it's really finding that sweet spot. And that's again, with my electrolytes, I'm trying to balance all of those things and really tweak that to find out, okay, how much salt do I need? Um, and how much fat do I want versus protein? And then, really kind of getting that all in line. And as you go further into this, and I remember this from round one, it really becomes, um, you become attuned to your tastes and you can follow your taste to kind of decide that. And so I've been just getting back in touch with that. I think I'm at a pretty good spot right now, but um, I'll keep I'll keep you updated on that. But my gut issues, I don't have any pain. I don't have any bloating. I don't have any um, like issues going to the bathroom, like I had for years and years and years and years of my life. So incredible how much life you get back once you don't have to worry about where you're going to go to the bathroom all the time, every day of your life. Um, skin, I've had a couple of small yet persistent little psoriasis patches. And again, much more detail on the psoriasis in my healing journey video. We um, live in an apartment right now and our pool has been closed for maintenance and, and things. And so uh, I was getting the opportunity to go out in the sun and kind of just take my little one swimming and get enough sun and my psoriasis had completely cleared up. But over the last six, eight weeks or so, we haven't really had access to that and it's been so incredibly hot that we just don't want to go outside unless we're able to get in the water and so I haven't been getting as much sun and these little spots have kind of come back I have a couple I'm wearing light makeup but you can see them a little bit there's like one right here and on my forehead of course and then I have a, a few on my knee I'll put a picture up and so I kind of thought maybe it was the last of that liquid dairy, the heavy cream that I was having that might be contributing to the psoriasis. And so that's why I cut that out at about the two week mark. So I'd cut out all other dairy on day one. So no cheese and, and stuff like that or yogurt or anything. But then at about the two week mark, I thought, I think it's time to cut the cream and see if that helps my skin. And I, I mean, I don't know yet. It's maybe helped a little bit but i actually got out in the sunshine yesterday and i already noticed today like 40 percent better so i really think i just need to get sun exposure so i'm gonna be working on that now that our pool is gonna be back open and um all of that so body composition again not something i'm really highly concerned about i would like to get a little bit more muscle put on, but I mostly do for exercise. I do light to moderate yoga, sometimes intense if I feel like it. But again, with the fatigue and the energy stuff, I'm not trying to like overly stress my body and really do a lot of intensity right at this moment. So I really enjoy yoga. I like just kind of 
doing my own thing a lot of days. I have a set of Olympic rings that I've hung up and I've posted a few videos. Uh, I don't think I've shown you the rings yet, but I have one back that I need to edit that I'm going to put up. Um, just showing you a few things that I do on there. So I do a little bit of strength, resistance, body weight with yoga and then with those rings. And I'm just planning on upping that as soon as I feel ready for it. But I have noticed that my back, like my upper body has leaned out quite a bit. Um, you know, you want to see these muscles here. It's, you know, I've put on some, some muscle here. So that's kind of where I'm at with body composition. I don't really need to lose much weight. Um, I would like to just uh, have a little more definition, a little more upper body strength. I used to have quite a bit more muscle before pregnancy and then, um, you know, I've been building, working on building that back up, but I'm not in any rush. And that's kind of what I would leave you with is a few tips for you know starting out or if you're struggling to get to that 30 day mark i would uh really try to eliminate anything in your house that's that's really causing you an issue whether that's food like i even kind of asked the rest of my family i'm like i mean that's just my fiance and we have a three-year-old but um like you know for a little bit can i just can we just not bring anything into the house because if it's in here i'm gonna eat it you know and i just need 21 days to 30 days or so of just not having the temptation around me so that I can get rid of these cravings, get closer to being truly fat adapted. And then, you know, if you guys bring some chips home or whatever, sometimes it's okay. Um, I won't be tempted. So if, if, so doing whatever you need to do to set yourself up to win is really important. I get my groceries delivered because again, I, it's like, I don't want to go in the store. I don't want to be tempted if I'm slightly hungry or tired to get, you know, a, a chocolate bar or even beef jerky. Cause you can't even find beef jerky that doesn't have sugar and preservatives and corn syrup and soy sauce and all this kind of stuff in it. It's actually kind of hard at the grocery store to find like pure, kind of snacky carnivore foods sometimes and so I really kind of isolated myself in a way so that I could focus on me focus on my health and not be distracted by a lot of the things that have have um tripped me up in the past like not going out to eat not doing you know as little of that stuff as possible so I could really just focus on getting through 30 days no alcohol um that's a big big one for me I was you know kind of hooked on my one to two drinks a night kind of a thing and so that was kind of hard to give up but I, I really want to go as pure as possible right now so that I can see how good I can feel and then maybe I'll add a few things back in later on who knows but that's a tip and then getting outside is another good tip if you can right now I know it's pretty much hot everywhere but we're really looking forward to getting back into doing some swimming and hanging out in the sunshine and enjoying that again because that's very healing as well I love being in the sun it's a mood booster for me too. I'm sure it is for everyone. Um, and lastly, I would just say to stay connected to the community. There's so many awesome carnivore content creators here on YouTube um, that really you can, if whatever you're struggling with, you can find somebody who identifies with that or who's gone through the same thing. And so whether you decide to do coaching or not, or join a community, you know, like a Patreon community or not, just finding somebody that you resonate with and to kind of follow and just get inspired by, I think is really helpful, especially in the that first phase. So I hope everybody's doing well out there. Let me know your stories in the comments and any questions you have that you think I might be able to answer for you. I will be, um, putting up more of my meal prep videos soon because I enjoy doing those and I think those um, can help people out. And so we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching today. Bye.